Good morning, explorers. Happy Map Monday. I've decided to record a series of videos sharing the maps from my books. And so I'm going to start with my very first book map, the map from my Blood of Kings trilogy. Um, the first book was By Darkness Hid. Looks like this. And I also released a special edition hardcover, so it looks like that too. Um, this map was the first map I ever drew. And as I tell people when I teach at conferences, it ends up looking a lot like Africa. That was an accident. It used to look a lot more like Africa. It came like way over here. And I was like, uh oh, so I erased a bunch. Um, I drew this shape and I added in some mountains and I added in um, a whole bunch of dots. Like, I don't even know, like a hundred dots. I was like thinking there'd be just a lot of cities in my, in my world. And, um, when I started naming them, I thought, ooh, I gotta erase some of those dots. So I erased a bunch of the dots and then I went about naming them. Um, I didn't, I used Hebrew in this series as kind of my ancient language. I, I, uh, I liked how JK Rowling used Latin for her magical terms and stuff in the Harry Potter books and thought that was clever. And all I had on the shelf was a Hebrew Greek concordance and a French dictionary. And I thought Hebrew sounded a lot more fantasy like. It sounds very much like Klingon, I just gotta say. So I went with Hebrew. But I didn't want everything in the in the in the story to be a Hebrew word and it didn't it felt I didn't want a monoculture. So when I made my map I wanted to, to try to build some culture into it. And since this was my first fantasy novel and I didn't really know what I was doing, um, I went about it in kind of a unique way. Here's what I did. So I came up with a theme for every town on the map. And so, for example, this is a pretty little map poster I did of the map to uh, give away to Kickstarter supporters when I when I fundraised the audiobooks. So. For example, Carmine, right here, is a vineyard town. So I listed a bunch of names that had to do with any anything to do with vineyards. I had Pinot, Verdo, um, all these words that had to do with winemaking. Um, and then when I, uh, like Zara Rock up here, Zara Rock, I listed all kinds of things that had to do with the names of stars. And... Um, Let's see, Nisos, I chose Hawaiian, Hawaiian sounding names. Um, Allentown was an orchard town. And so I came up with a long list of types of apples. So I had Gala and Ambrosia and um, Pippin and Mac uh, Macintosh. I, I could go on and on. I had, on the back of each, uh, like I made a little chart to brainstorm things about that location in that city and on the back I just listed all these names and so when I would choose a character name for that location I would just look at the back and, and choose my names let's see what else I had Walden's Watch had names that had to do with um, the sea so I had reef and coral and um, shoal names like that um, let's see here what else did I do oh I can hardly remember but Anyway, I did, I picked themes. I think Cherem was um, Gaelic names, and I, I chose Inupiat names for my Berlin folks. So that was kind of how I tried to just really quickly assign a theme to these places and try to give some feeling of diversity. Um, I don't know if I would recommend that today, but that's what I did. And so this is a map, it's called Aretz. I named it Aretz because, like I said, I was going with a Hebrew. And when I looked up Earth, the word was Eretz. And incidentally, I found out later that if you look at the uh, uh, the Torah, the Hebrew Torah, or the first few books of the Bible, um, where it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the word for Earth is Eretz, E-R apostrophe R-E-T-S. And so that is the same word used to name my land. This was my first map, like I said, and that is the actual map that's on this board is the bottom half of this map and um, for a little bit of a spoiler these are the Blood of Kings trilogy as I said um, the the special edition hardcovers and the originals but these three books and I will talk about their maps in another episode this trilogy the Kinsman Chronicles is a ancient prequel to the Blood of Kings 
So these happen about 500 years before these books and they tell the story of the first kings that came to this land. And so while this book and this book each have a different map, this third book has what you see on the bottom of my map board and I'll show you really quickly and we'll go over it more in this book's episode. But there it is and it's a rats and that's what they name it when they arrive and it is basically a version of this map that I drew. I redrew it. I tried to draw it in the way that if you look up like an old map of of Europe or North America that was drawn in like the 1400s it's all kind of stretched out funny and so that's what I was trying to do when I did this map. Um, anyway more on that one later but it is the same place in book three of this series as this trilogy has. I do draw all my own maps. I really enjoy it. It is a lot of work but um, and I don't do it like most artists. Um, my process is is my own weird cobbled together process. Um, what I do is I just sketch it on a piece of paper over and over until I'm feeling pretty good about it and then um, I'll hold it up to the window with another piece of paper over it, usually tracing paper at that point, and I'll trace it with a black sharpie, the outline of everything I want, and I'll put the dots in the right places in the mountains and everything like that. And then usually off in the corner, I will draw a group of trees, or sometimes I draw individual ones, like three or four different trees. Um, and then I'll draw a couple mountains, and it depends on what else I want to put on the map. So in this case I drew, you can see my mountains are mostly the same and my trees are mostly the same. I had like three or four different kinds of trees and so I'll draw them and then I scan that image into Photoshop and I clean it up and then I use those trees to make clusters. So I'll copy and paste, copy and paste on layers so that they can get into a nice little bunch and then I flatten that and I have a bigger cluster of trees and then I'll copy and paste that until I have I can make them move around and then later I can erase parts of them and put the text in. Um, usually what happens though is I change the story or I don't like something or I realize something's not working with the map and so then I end up printing it out and going kind of back to the drawing board with it and putting a new piece of tracing paper over it and tracing it and keeping what I liked and changing and adding what I needed and then I'll rescan that in and do the process again. Sometimes I'll copy and paste chunk of that onto the original and I do most of it in Photoshop. Um, I'm not a freehand artist with the exception of my little trees and even those I, I painstakingly um, develop until I'm happy with them. I can't just sit down and draw this amazing piece of art straight. That's not the kind of artist I am. Um, I'm more of a graphic artist so I cobble it together and so that's the process that I use and I've used that process for all my maps and I will be showing you them over the next uh, month or so until I've shown you all my maps. I'm not sure how many I have but I do love it and as long as I can um, afford to or have the time to I'll probably always do my own maps. Um, However, if I ever was published by somebody who could afford to pay someone to do an awesome map, I might just let them do it because it is a lot of work. I'm talking probably a good two weeks of four-ish, five-ish hours a day work until I could finish it. And so usually it takes me months because I just fiddle with it here and there until it's like, oh gosh, I have to turn this map in. I need to finish this map. And so then I'll spend several days or a weekend just working on it. Um, I'm not fast. So if I had the opportunity, I would be probably more than happy to let someone else do it. But I would also give them my drawing. I would definitely have my own. I always have my own black and white or pencil sketch of a, of my story world that I've that I've done so I would give that to the artist and then they would have that to work with so it would still be my my land and they would make it beautiful because <laughs> they're getting paid to and so that would be my dream perhaps um, so I do like making them but I'd much rather write the book or write a new book um, than spend a month or three weeks or two weeks even on a really complicated map um, some maps I spend more time on than others. The one that I did for this map I spent forever on because I put a bunch of extras on it, which I'll show you when I do that one. Until next time, happy Map Monday.